Welcome back, TCS TV viewers. Chris Nichols here from the Camera Store and with Mike Drew, a uh, regular guest host. Uh, Mike Drew here, and uh, Mike's got a brand new EOS M5. I've got my EOS M5, and uh, we're going to play with this fantastic little mirrorless camera today. And uh, you guys can probably see, it's cold. I mean, I'm even ear wearing my ear warmers. Uh, my wife's going to be happy because I don't use these because, of course, I'm all uh, superficial about my looks, but today it's too cold. Uh, Jordan wants me to mention, uh, Calgary must be hell because hell has frozen over because it's freezing cold because Canon may have actually released a really capable mirrorless camera. Hey, Mike? Yeah, I, I've had this thing for a week and I love it. Yeah, so I'm eager to play with it. I hope you guys like pictures of ice and uh, geese <laughs> because the geese are smart. They're actually going south for the winter. They're very, very smart animals. We, however, are not. And uh, maybe you guys can see at home, just as a quick segue here, uh, I know it's really hard to notice, but Mike has a somewhat large lens on his little tiny mirrorless camera here today. Uh, you've got the Sigma 150 600. Yeah, I love this lens. It uh, it, it works too. perfectly with the adapter on the M5. It's just, it's kind of a little bit of a dream camera for the moment. Well, anyway. and that's cool because you're going to get to test a lot of the EF glass with the mount and see how that works. I know viewers at home want to know what the M5 is like with EF. And I've got a lot of the brand new EFM lenses, so we should have some fun today. And uh, if we survive, it'll be a good day. Yeah, let's go freeze. Sounds good. This is a touch screen and the IPC VF is a little bit off the screen, which is nice, but I am getting some nose touching here. My auto focusing point is going to the left. Although I haven't noticed my finger pushing on the screen and pushing the focus point up to the top right at all. And that's good because the screen is flush. I was worried about that. But of course you've got a really, really adjustable active touch area on the Canon EOS M5. And beyond where some cameras do full screen or half screen, this thing actually lets you do top right, bottom right, top left. I mean, you can really set exactly where you want this thing to go. I'm going to set it to the right side of the panel and that should get rid of the nose touches. Minus 18, I'm using gloves with a touch sensor fingertip and uh, the focus pull works like magic on this thing. Sweet. Those are squirrel tracks and probably white-tailed deer tracks. And those things that look like somebody's blinking their eyes, that's the, the impressions of wing tips where a bird has taken off and flown close by the snow. The screen has kind of got some ice frozen onto it because it's so damn cold. But if I swing around and put it over to Chris, it's immediate. I'm just, it switches from the, the back screen to the eyepiece in a blink, literally. I just took some video of the ice going by here, and uh, this was at a 320 millimeter equivalent handheld. Uh, I'm on the 55 to 200. I've got the image stabilizer turned on in the lens, but I'm also trying the digital stabilizer in video. You're gonna get a little bit of a crop, but it's not a huge crop, and uh, very impressive. I mean, nice and stable. I'm not noticing any sort of the weird jello-y stuff that we've seen on some of the other cameras. Uh, it's doing a good job. Here you can see the footage without the uh, digital stabilizer, but overall, very impressed with how well I can hand hold it. Overall, at the start, pretty impressed. Okay, this rock's about 20 feet away, and the geese over there, about 300 feet away. That's how fast that focuses is with the 150 to 600. Uh, I'm having actually a lot of fun playing with this macro 28 mil. Beautiful little lens. It's a 3.5, but it's image stabilized, STM motor, really nice compact size, and uh, it's actually giving us two stages of macro. And when you go to super macro, I mean, I'm getting better than one to one off this sensor. So, really impressive. I love the close up detail. Uh, that being said, you know, it's, it's not a big long telephoto macro, so working distance is very poor. You got to basically be touching the subject. And in order to help you with that, they did incorporate this little LED light. Hopefully you guys can see that. Two stages of strength there. Um, it's not a lot of light. You know, testing it in the dark camera store, it was maybe giving me one more stop of light. But when you're really up close like that, it's going to help you out a little bit. It's a cool idea. Love having that uh, exposure compensation dial right there at your thumb. Even with gloves on, it's really easy to turn it. The viewfinder doesn't seem to give you a real accurate representation of what the uh, the picture is going to turn out like whereas the screen does which is 
kind of annoying, but I suppose there's worse things. Okay, Mike, so uh, I'm just adjusting my hand, <laughs> hand warmers here. Uh, so you've had the camera for about a week now, but uh, what are you finding with the handling so far? Well, I, I, I find the handling uh, really nice. Coming from the 70D to this camera, it's, uh, it just fits. It's, the, the grip is deep enough for my long fingers. It's a little bit shallow through here, but because you got such a good grip, it uh, doesn't really make much difference. You know, for me, I feel like this grip is made exactly for my hands. I've always found the M's comfortable to hold. For me, my fingers go right to the two dials, you know. The only thing I will say is maybe because of the way that my hand's smaller when I hold it, my thumb does cross across the top right of the screen. And uh, it's not changing my autofocus in point, but it's always putting me into the quick menu. So yeah. I don't know if we just call that a convenience factor, that it's always there ready to change as I need to. I guess so. Uh, no, it's annoying. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, overall nice handling. The Wi-Fi button here is pretty cool. Tell us about that. You just press that and then it'll give you the option of where you want to connect. Your phone comes up, tap that. Just a quick button. Go right? to your just phone. Shortcut right to yeah. it without having to go into the menu. Uh, we've got mic jack over here, standard RS60 E3 cable release, which is great. I mean, a Whatever lot of 70D means. users. Well, you know, the little the little mini phone oh, kind of thing. cable release. Yeah. yeah. You know, any sort of 70D user, 60D user are going to yep. have those cables. But no headphone jack, and that's, that's a little disappointing. I mean, I know uh, we're probably going to compare this camera to the 80D because it's got very similar internals. Yeah. But headphone jack would have been nice. It would have been nice. Uh, also, I would have liked to have seen on the screen itself mm. the audio levels when you're in manual audio. Oh, and they're not giving it no, to you. No, right? no, you got to go hit the info button to get your level to show up, set it, and then hit the info button to get out so you can see your whole screen. Right, it's supposed to be Why? able to customize how Why? It should, there's plenty of room for it right there mm. on the screen. Now, Mike, I know as a journalist you're shooting a lot of stills, but you're also shooting a lot of video. In fact, yeah. maybe nowadays even more video. Oh, video all cases. the time, yeah. Yeah. So I've played with the ADD. I mean, we know what the video is like on that. The 1080 on the ADD is, is good, a little soft, and I'm still seeing that here. And naturally, people are going to compare this to the A6300 from Sony because they are similar sizes, similar price points. I mean, let's just say the 6300, of course, 4K video. Good sharp video, although the 1080 isn't that sharp on the 6300 either. Uh, it does have 120 frame per second slow mo. Here we're at 60 frame per second. Yeah. What do you like about video on this camera? Well, I, I just, um, you know, I don't shoot 4K really because yeah. I'm shooting for web, I'm shooting for newspapers. I don't need 4K. Exactly. So I don't miss it. Um, what I really like though is the touch screen on this thing. It's mm. phenomenal. It's just, it, I mean, you just literally touch where and you want the it to go focus moves and it locks it's it's just great yeah we actually did a video sample and again tracking really really good job yeah, yeah tracking was, just... was incredible jordan was sprinting like a jackrabbit and it just stuck right on him and right up until he's like a foot in front of the lens absolutely and of course sony on the 6300 has a distinct lack of touch screen uh but even on the 6500 although it's nice that you can touch you can't do it through the evf during video okay but what's yeah. great about this is you can have it up to your eye yep, and right. you can be touching i mean you can't do it on the add either right you no. have to be using the back screen and touch but yep. here you can have it up against your face and still track and that's a really cool feature absolutely you know the only thing i would say that i can compl complain about on this in a handling perspective and again it's not a huge thing but i do wish that we had a fully articulating screen i mean canon do choose to do that on a lot of their bodies uh this is very much like the sony's you know just this vertical just add another half a centimeter give us that fully articulating screen yeah. I mean, do you find that useful to have on the 70d I, yeah i do find it useful yeah. but it's pretty rare that I'd have to flip it around so I can actually see from the front. I mean, for video, that's true. The only thing I was saying actually for stills on the ice today, it would have been nice because I had the camera down low and I couldn't really see. Yeah, what true. I was looking that's at. true. But, uh, still no headphone jack. No headphone jack. That's true. Now, of course, the other thing that people are really curious about on this camera is the autofocus. Uh, and, you know, again, a very similar system to the ADD, which did a good job. In fact, we brought that out and shot the two against each other. Yeah. Um, you know, from our test that we did there, Mike, I would say that uh, the M5 actually focused really well. Hey? Oh, yeah, it's phenomenal. I, I didn't see a whole lot of difference between this and the ADD. Actually, absolutely. I mean, it almost looked like the exact same thing. Yeah. The Sony a6300, surprisingly, actually, in this particular test, didn't do very well. And that could be the kit lens. I mean, we have used it for autofocusing tests before. It is a very fast focusing camera as well. Now buffer rate, not great. I mean the yeah. ADD will just keep shooting. This camera does shut off after about, oh, I don't know, Ron plus JPEG. I was only getting about eight or nine frames. Yeah, but, that sounds about right. Yeah, and again, the A6300 from Sony, worse. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it never had a good buffer, so you know, you'd have to go 6500 to do better there. What about with the adaptive glass? Because well, I haven't used it with the F stuff. 
You know, um, I had the original M, so I uh, I was one of those. I guess maybe you'd say I was foolish, but I, <laughs> early I like adopter. that we'll camera. Go with yeah, early, early adopter. adopter. <laughs> and so I I already had the uh, the adapter to mm. use the the regular Canon lenses, the Canon mount lenses on it. And uh, I've been shooting quite a bit with it, okay. especially with that 150 to 600 Sigma. That's the one I really wanted to use because I shoot so much wildlife and, and sports, nature stuff yeah. and sports. And um, it uh, works phenomenally. Mm. It, it works really well. I was shooting some stuff at a uh, hockey game last night uh, at ice level, NHL players. And I was able to mm. lock onto a player and just follow them around. Even when people were crossing in front, the it didn't search it yeah absolutely. stuck right there i was really impressed with that it's nice to see that with the adapter and ef glass we're not getting a compromise and again just again to go to the sony comparison with a metabones it works but the minute you put adapted glass on there your autofocusing speed goes way down yeah yeah so mike i had a lot of fun shooting today i mean this is this is my first experience with the m5 and of course i'm familiar with these cameras but i really liked it as a system but my question to you is uh you obviously are no stranger to SLRs. You have no problem lugging around a heavy SLR. You've done that your whole life. So why did you buy this camera? Like, what does this do for you that that wouldn't do? We have to shoot a lot of video. Right. And uh, more and more all the time. And I've been waiting for a camera like this from Canon. So I've got this electronic viewfinder I can put up to my mm. eye, have three points of contact, and just hit the button and record video. Right. And to me, that's worth every penny of the price of this camera. Yeah, I mean, I guess the thing is, we, we talk about the ADD a lot when comparing this camera, and one of the things I did want to mention is, that's got an optical viewfinder, but otherwise you have to shoot your video off the back screen. And with this camera, 2.3 million dots in the EVF, I'm kind of in the camp now that although I love optical viewfinders, I think that EVFs are just as good or better. I don't feel like you're really missing out now using an electronic viewfinder, and I like the advantages it gives you. You know, and again, being able to do the touch auto autofocus while up to the viewfinder, yeah. Really yeah, cool. there's all kinds of advantages to that, but I gotta say hmm. that I still prefer the optical viewfinder. For this particular camera, for the use that I was talking about, mm -hmm. it's perfect. Now, when we first heard about this camera, Mike, the SM5, everybody online was saying, this looks like an ADD just transferred to a mirrorless body. Uh, and so I'm gonna preface this uh, rant that I'm about to go on, because I did love this camera. I think it's a great step in the right direction, but I don't agree that it's an ADD in mirrorless format, because we're still missing some key stuff. Image quality is the same, focusing speed is the same, you know, that's all good. Low light performance, you guys can see some shots here. Very impressive, very similar dynamic range. But there are some features we're missing, things like uh, weather sealing, not weather sealed, no headphone jack, no audio control to have right on yeah, screen, right now that's kind that's of annoying, right? Um, you know, things like the buffer rate, although the focusing is the same, this camera won't shoot quite as long as an ADD will in sequence. And I mean, the flash, like what do you think about that? Why they couldn't have used this to trigger other Canon flashes, right. like on virtually every other Canon with a pop-up flash. Right, and that's, that's one of the main things that, that keeps us from just tearing this off exactly. the top of our camera, exactly. right? And it's not here. You know, it comes to video as well. We're not getting the all eye. You know, I don't know why they didn't have the all yeah. intra compression on there. I like the screen, but again, it doesn't fully articulate. And I know a lot of people like that for video work. Uh, and the time lapse, you know, that was the other thing. Hey, the ADD, you could do interval timing, get full resolution JPEGs, and then build your own time lapse. Exactly. This does it in movie. It's a really cool interface, yeah. but you don't have the option of having the JPEGs afterwards. So you'd have to yeah. go to an external. Your lab. iPhone does it's the lovely. same thing exactly right so you know overall yeah we're still missing a lot of stuff the, the positive thing for the video is magic lantern will probably come in here hack this camera and give us a lot of that stuff <laughs> yeah, back no but kidding. they shouldn't have to you know no absolutely it's kind of still this case of of you know canon giveth and then canon taketh away you know what i mean why can't they just give us a camera that's exactly the same but in a different form factor so that we uh, get what we want and we can choose what form factor we like i think the big thing for me out of all of this now is that you've got a big player like Canon who's now made a mirrorless camera. It took him a while, mm -hmm. but they made a mirrorless camera that really competes with a lot of the Sony bodies in this way. I could see people looking at this camera system saying, finally, I feel like this is worth the money, the whole package, I could use it. And I don't know, it was such an intuitive design, so easy to use today. And I think uh, it really puts the ball in Nikon's court now to maybe hopefully inspire yeah. them to start competing in this market. We'll see what happens. Yeah, but I, it's good to see. You know, it's funny. This year seems to be where Canon has decided to bring their cameras up to where everybody else is going and make it very, very competitive. Uh, last thing I want to say is thanks very much for joining us. As usual, hey, my right? pleasure. Yeah, we always, always love having love you out. And uh, I'm glad that we got to shoot these two cameras together and get your personal uh, opinion about it. Yeah, thank you. It was right. fun. Yeah, absolutely.
So guys, don't forget, check us out on Instagram. You can see our photos on there. Check out Mike's webpage, absolutely. And the On The Road column, he does a great job with that. So see more of the work that he's doing there. And uh, tweet us, check us out on Facebook. Stay tuned, keep watching. We'll see you guys very soon.